Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing some new fragrances that are going to be released or that have already been released recently. And I'm going to share with you whether I am planning on getting a travel size, blind buying, or skipping out on them. So if you are new to my channel and you love all things girly, fragrance, beauty, body care, self care, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to see you back for my future uploads. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. So I'm sorry, you're gonna be seeing me in the same makeup and outfit more than usual because my husband is going on a work trip and he's usually the one that helps me with the kids while I lock myself in my room and film. And since he's not gonna be here, I wanna make sure that I have content for the time that he's gonna be gone and that way I can focus on my girls. So today we're gonna be talking about all of these new releases that just keep on coming out left and right. I feel like we are not getting no time to breathe it's just like you get one new release tomorrow you're gonna see another one and it's just been non-stop 2024 has been just all about the new releases so i do have 10 fragrances that i want to talk to you about in this video so let's jump right into those fragrances the first one is going to be a new body mist from sol de janeiro which I thought was going to be released around Valentine's Day. It got leaked on the internet and we saw the packaging of it, which is Sol de Janeiro Carioca Crush. It has not been released, so I'm not sure when this is supposed to come out, but I just wanted to share the notes for this one. The notes are crisp pear, pink violet, and white cedarwood. So we're getting violet again in a fragrance mist. I do like pear a lot. I am pretty sure I'm going to blind buy this because I just love the Sol de Janeiro fragrance mist for those days where I just want to spray myself with something that's not too intense maybe for bedtime to run errands so I do like to pick up the fragrance mist and review them for you guys so that is one that I am going to be reviewing it does sound pretty kind of like I would say fresh maybe a little woody We'll see how that smells, but I am interested in picking that one up. There's not too much information on that one. At least I'm not sure when it's going to be released. If any of you guys have more info, make sure to comment down below in the comment section, but it's a really nice red packaging. Would have been perfect for Valentine's Day or like around February. I haven't seen anything on that. So that is the first one and that is the only body mist that I'm gonna talk about in this video. The rest are going to be actual perfumes. The next perfume I'm going to be talking about is by Carolina Herrera and it is Good Girl Blush Elixir. So I wasn't like the biggest fan of Good Girl Blush. It was a very pretty feminine scent. It reminded me so, so much of Mont Blanc's signature. Like it just, it smelled almost identical to that fragrance and that fragrance was such a love at first sniff for me when I first got it the Mont Blanc signature, but then the citruses in there mixed with kind of like vanilla cloudish type of smell was so good. But the citruses mixed in there never really made me absolutely love it. So this flanker, the main accords are yellow floral, woody, patchouli, sweet vanilla citrus warm spicy rose balsamic and earthy the bottle is really nice it has that pink look to it but it's a little darker it has like a, the black ombre effect to it the top note is bergamot and mandarin orange middle notes are ylang ylang and rose and the base note is patchouli and vanilla this one is one that i would actually like to try maybe a travel size of this one but i'm not sure if i can actually go into maybe like a sephora and try it out i would rather do that because since i wasn't really a big fan of the blush perfume i don't know if i'll like this one i do like ylang ylang i do love bergamot and mandarin orange but i am picky with rose fragrances and how how rose is done in perfumes and then there's patchouli and vanilla which if the patchouli is done right this sounds like it can be a very nice perfume so I am interested in trying it out just not 100% sure if I'm gonna be getting a travel size or if I'm gonna actually go and sniff it from a store but it does sound very very pretty and yellow florals is something that I am noticing is getting done a lot more. I'm guessing it's because spring and summer is around the corner. So I am definitely curious about this one, but definitely not enough to blind buy it. And I would prefer 
if I can try it in store because I am seeing that the main accords, the patchouli is high up there. So it's probably a note that is going to be very present. So moving on to the next one, we have Giorgio Armani's My Way Nectar. I honestly don't even know how many flankers at this point. I mean, flankers are pretty much all that's coming out and I do feel a little burnt out at some point. My passion always kind of reignites every once in a while, but these past few weeks I've kind of just been feeling like, I don't know, like I'm just like, ooh. I just want to go and enjoy what I have in my collection because it's just flanker after flanker after flanker. And I usually don't complain too much about that because I do like flankers when they have a little difference to them. Sometimes I might even enjoy them more than the original one. But after a while, it's like, you know. All right. So the main accord for My Way Nectar are white floral, citrus, sweet, aquatic, fruity, two rolls, ozonic, musky powdery and woody the top notes are pear orange blossom and bergamot that sounds really nice then there is violet leaf two rows and jasmine in the middle and white musk cedar wood and bourbon vanilla in the base the star of the show hopefully for this one is that pear they're kind of really marketing that it looks kind of like a sparkling pear. I love the bottle. I'm not gonna lie. When I saw the bottle, the pink cap looks so, so pretty. I'm gonna be putting pictures and whatever I can find on each of the fragrances, but it looks really, really nice. The bottle itself, I love it. I would love to have that bottle in my collection because I did get rid of my original My Way and I only have a travel size of My Way Intense, I think it is. So yeah, this one is one that I have the travel size in my Sephora cart. I just haven't purchased it yet, but that one I might get. So there might be a review coming up on that one. I'm not like super duper excited about it, but I'm a little bit curious about it for sure. Next up, we have a fragrance from Killian and this one is Born To Be Unforgettable, which this one is also available already. The main accords are very different. This is a very different and I'm very curious about it, but at the same time, this is one that I have to smell in person when I go shopping or something. The main accords are citrus, fresh spicy, woody, warm spicy, Coca-Cola, cinnamon, conifer, powdery, vanilla, and sweet. So the first three main accords are usually what I look at the most and it's woody, fresh, spicy, and citrus, which is kind of making me think that it might be a little bit masculine leaning. So that's one that I would definitely want to smell in person before I even get any size of this fragrance. The top notes are lime and Coca-Cola, which is so unique. I don't think I've ever smelled a perfume that has Coke as a note. Middle notes are nutmeg and cinnamon, so kind of spicy, warm, and then the base notes are cedar and vanilla. So it's kind of sounds like a woody, spicy, maybe fizzy type of scent. But for some reason, it just makes me think like it's going to be a masculine leaning scent. That's really not my favorite type of scent. So I'm probably not gonna purchase anything and actually smell it if I ever come across it at a store. Next up, we have Narciso Rodriguez for her musk nude. Now, when it comes to Narciso Rodriguez, I haven't had like the best luck. I have owned Narciso Rodriguez. I don't remember the name of it, but it was like Poudre, which is like a, it was a square, very powdery, kind of vintage smelling perfume. It didn't smell bad, but I did declutter it. It was very ladylike and very classy and powdery. So it was very nice. And I did try Musk Noir Rose, I think. That was not for me. Everyone labels that one like the perfect date night type of scent. And for me, it just kind of smells like very mature, kind of vintage smelling. Just it didn't, I didn't like it. So the main accords for this new one are white floral, musky, powdery, sweet, woody rose and a malic patchouli and vanilla top notes are white flowers jasmine and pink pepper so right there it's looking like it's gonna be a pass for me middle note is musk orange blossom and damask rose and the base notes are tonka bean patchouli and cedarwood i'm not a fan of jasmine
jasmine, pink pepper, I'm very sensitive to, and white flowers, no thanks. So I think this is one that I'm just gonna skip out on and maybe I'll listen to a few reviews and see how the other girlies here on YouTube are feeling about it. But me personally, this is not one that I'm interested in reviewing or purchasing or adding to my collection. Next up, we have Paco Rabanne Fame Parfum. If you have been around and you have been watching my channel, I did get, I believe it was a travel size of the Fame perfume like the original one that was such a hard pass for me that was a no thank you type of perfume for me it was claiming to be tropical you guys know i'm very picky when something says it's tropical that to me was a white floral disaster the mango was a little bit in there but it was more of like a screechy perfumey white floral perfume to me it did not have a tropical feel to it if i was looking for something tropical that is not what i would reach for so this flanker the main accords are woody tropical amber warm spicy fruity sweet white floral powdery patchouli and balsamic top notes are mango pink pepper and bergamot middle notes jasmine patchouli and frankincense that is crazy i have smelled frankincense before it's very relaxing when you diffuse it i don't think i've ever smelled it in a fragrance and then base notes are sandalwood benzoin and musk this is going to be a pass for me as well if i see it when i'm out shopping i'll definitely I'll put my nose to anything while I'm shopping. I'll smell all of the flankers. I'm not going to be adding this to my collection, not in a travel size, not blind buying it. I would have to try it out to see, or again, watch reviews and see what other people think about it, but not one I'm interested in. So I'm not really interested in too much that has been coming out. Next, we have one that's also available. This is by Sniff and this is Vanilla Vice. When I saw the marketing for this, I was so ready to just blind buy it the full bottle give it to me and i'm glad i did it because i went to ulta the other day and they had three sniff fragrances there they had i think it's called tart deco one of them smelled like tom ford lost cherry they smelled one of them was like super masculine they're very very unique and just for a certain type of preference i don't think that they are crowd pleasing type of perfumes in my opinion i did not like any of them and when i saw this one i was like wow this is probably the one that i'm really gonna love the main accords are vanilla amber sweet woody musky powdery white floral and warm spicy the notes are amberwood madagascar vanilla orconox musk sugar ice cream and jasmine sambac definitely tempting but I did see a few reviews on, I believe I went on Fragrantica and read about it. And I don't know if I saw maybe a video, someone talking about it and saying that it was definitely not what it looks like. As in, you know, you have all these beautiful pictures of like ice cream and vanilla, and it just makes you want to pick it up. But many people are saying it's just the opposite of that but yeah people were just not happy with it people were saying that it does not smell gourmand it's not what you would expect it to be so i'm not interested in this one either next up we have mugler's alien hyper sense another one that if you have been watching my videos you know this is a straight pass for me but i did want to mention it because the bottle is absolutely beautiful those colors just caught my attention i'm not an alien fan i do love alien on other people every single time that i smell alien on someone else i love how it smells i've even stopped people to ask them what they're wearing in the past i think i had this waitress when i was eating with my mom somewhere and i had to ask her what she was wearing and it was alien so it smells amazing on other people it just does not work on me but this flanker the main accords are woody white floral fruity amber musky citrus sweet floral and powdery there's green mandarin and pear in the opening Jasmine some back and Indian Jasmine in the mid and cashmere and amberwood driftwood and musk. So there's two types of Jasmine in there. It's going to be a Jasmine balm and Jasmine is just not my friend, unfortunately, but I feel like if it works for you, that bottle is beautiful. The bottle is gorgeous. I love it so much. Like I would just love to have that in my collection, but I know most likely it's not gonna work for me. But if I can smell it, I definitely will. More woody in the main accords than white floral but yeah i'm curious about it but highly uh skeptical on that one next up we have dolce and gabbana q eau de parfum intense now 
it's crazy i have not even tried the first original q that one is a cherry scent but many people are saying that it's cherry mixed with kind of like that dolce and gabbana light blue dna which i'm very curious about because i'm very picky with cherry and maybe adding like a citrusy type of fresh freshness to it will be maybe one that i enjoy so I am curious about it. Now this flanker has black cherry, so it might be more tart and maybe darker or deeper with a middle note of heliotrope and a base note of amber. So it does sound very interesting. I would like to smell that one. If I can get like a travel size, I would actually like to pick up the original Q and this one and kind of give my thoughts on these but if you have tried the original Q let me know what your thoughts are on it and whether you love cherry or you're picky with cherry how does it work for you I'm very curious and last but not least we have Lancome La Via Belle this is like the 37th flanker of La Via Belle and this is Rose Extraordinaire the main accords are rose, musky, amber, powdery, woody, citrus, mossy, earthy, floral, and iris. The bottle is really pretty as usual. The top note is bergamot, stems, greens, orange. So I'm guessing it has like a green touch in the opening along with three different rows. There's the mask rose, rose, and rose water along with iris. So I'm guessing a powdery rose with a green opening and a little citrusy, maybe it's gonna be citrusy bright green opening, so fresh. The base notes are Umbroxan, Musk, Moss, Sandalwood, and Woody Notes. So not really interested because I already have two flankers from La Via Belle, which I really like, but I don't reach for them all the time, which are La Via Belle and Rose, which is a beautiful, like warm rose with that La Via Belle DNA, but there's also kind of like this fruity opening, I believe it's raspberry that it opens up with. And then I also have La Via Belle Intensement, I think is the one, Intensement or Intense, which is the one with hazelnut and whipped cream. So those are the ones that I really, really love. This one sounds like one that I'm not going to enjoy just because of how much rose is in there. And then I'm also not a fan of green <laughs> in my fragrances. So there's a lot more skips for me in this video than there is what I'm interested in. Let me know which ones you would like to try, which ones caught your attention, and which ones you will be skipping out on. Can't wait to talk to you in the comment section. Thank you so, so much for being here with me today. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I will see you guys in my next video.